Hey YouTube, what's going on? Carter here. We're going to take a look at the ZT300. Um, I mentioned in my preview video that I have owned one of these in the past. It was, uh, I think, a 302, the tan scaled version with the tiger striped blade. Uh, but when I had it originally, I didn't fully appreciate what I had because, you know, I really wasn't that experienced in the knife world. I mean, I knew the specs, I knew the materials, but I didn't fully appreciate what ZT was really offering with this knife. Uh, so now that I've had some experience with striders and hinderers and some of the higher end stuff, um, and I'm more aware of the features of the knife, I figured I'd give this another shot. And uh, I definitely got to say I'm not disappointed. First off, this is slightly smaller than the 200, uh, but not by much. And by smaller, I just mean lengthwise. This does have a little bit more blade to it. Both have a recurve, as you can see. This one has a much wider blade with a less aggressive recurve. Uh, so they're quite similar in overall design. I would say that the 300 is just kind of less, I hate saying aggressive, but just less intense of a design. You can see how it's much more pronounced, how you've got this sharp curve in here with a, a bigger swell, and then it tapers down a lot smaller. Whereas the 300, Things stay a little more consistent, a little more subtle with the design qualities, including the recurve. Very light recurve on here, whereas this has a, a much more pronounced recurve. Um, and I point those out because I actually like the way this one was executed more than the 200. Um, if you watch my 200 video, I did talk about how it's a little uncomfortable with how um, aggressive some of this styling is on the handle. You know, the swell is a little bit beefy, a little bit thick. Um, and this basically eliminates all those gripes with this knife. Um, I've, I absolutely love this knife. If there's one knife I could recommend, um, if you're looking for kind of a, a high quality US made, super strong overbuilt blade, I'd definitely go with this one. Um, I've mentioned before, the only thing I don't like about this knife is that it's assisted, but not only assisted, um, that you can't really take the uh, spring out. If you take the spring out, you have no detent. Now, I bought a bunch of bits and attempted to drill a detent hole in here, and I shot a series of videos of me trying to do that. They didn't turn out so good. Uh, not that anything went horribly wrong, but you know how it goes. I started on the project, uh, didn't work, how to try this, didn't work, how to try this, and you know, eventually I realized I can't put this, I can't film it, you know, I'm, I'm just scrambling to do anything I can to get it to work, and eventually I did. I got a fairly decent detent hole, not as deep as I'd like, because this heat-treated S30V steel, as you can imagine, is really hard to drill through, especially when you don't have proper machinery. Um, but I was able to get an, an okay detent, um, but I ended up just putting the uh, spring back in it, um, and I've actually kind of grown to like the assisted opening, I think. I, I used to really hate assisted opening knives, um, but after carrying this around and using it, I'm actually digging it. Um, it's pretty nice just to be able to flick this open, have it fly open and lock into place like that. Um, and as you can see, you can still close it one-handed. It's not too bad. The spring, I mean, closing it one-handed is just barely easier than a fully automatic knife. Uh, but, of course, the benefit of a spring-assisted knife, other than the legality, is that if that spring were to break, you know, you should still have a fully functioning folding knife. Whereas in an auto, you'd have a lot more issues getting a functioning knife out of it. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at this knife. Um, it has the recurve that Ken Onion is known for. This is actually a Strider-Ken Onion collaboration. However, I don't know why. It seems like Strider is kind of ducked out. Um, they don't really mention Strider as much with this knife anymore. And as you can see, it just says Ken Onion Design on there. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that. I don't know if Strider uh, kind of pulled their name out of the thing, uh, out of the deal, or if ZT did, or... Maybe they just didn't have as much to do with it as Ken Onion did. Um, but Strider isn't really mentioned as much as they were when this first came out years ago. You have the contoured G10 gator pattern here with the hex bolt pivot head right here. Same thick pivot that's in the uh, 200 series. Uh, the main difference is that this is a titanium frame lock. And you can see... I mean, this is uh, truly amazing right here. I mean, you've basically got a contoured 
sculpted titanium frame lock. Um, that's expensive to do, guys. And, you know, that's one of the main things I didn't appreciate when I first got this knife. I knew titanium was cool, but I didn't really understand everything that went into bringing this blade to production. Every, every additional step is money, it's machining, it's uh, time and effort. And this is not just a solid slab of titanium. Uh, this thing is contoured and it's got this, um, the gator pattern put into it. Um, it's nice and beveled around all the corners here. I mean, it is quite um, an amazing piece of work. G10 backspacer here. I believe it has a stainless steel liner on this side. I do not believe it's titanium. Um, I could be wrong. It is not skeletonized. Uh, you can see the lockup on here is nice and early, and this thing is rock solid. Um, every which way, it is rock solid. Um, once again, very impressed with how solid this knife is. When I first had it, I had I didn't even think about lockup. I would check uh, side to side on my knives, but I didn't even think to check up and down. I didn't know anything about... Uh, lock geometry and engagement and um, anything like that. So very impressed to see that this is actually an extremely well-constructed knife. Um, it, it's truly amazing what they've, uh, what they've done with this. I would recommend everybody pick one of these up if you can. Uh, lock bar stabilizer, hinder lock bar stabilizer right there. Uh, acts as both an overextender on the lock bar and uh, prevents you from pushing the lock bar in and out like so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nice big lanyard hole here. You've got your typical ZT pocket clip. Good amount hangs out. Oh, let's talk about the finish. Um, I'm assuming that this is a DLC finish. And once again, money. You know, I mean, people pay hundreds of extra dollars on Striders to get DLC coated finishes. Um, and you're getting that on this ZT out of the box. Um, I really like this fully blacked out version. I mean, I paid 200 bucks for this. Retail, I think, is like 275, uh, but I paid 200 brand new, and I think there's still some more available from a seller on eBay at that price. And uh, what you're getting for that amount of money, the materials, S30V steel, um, titanium frame lock, G10, fit and finish. I mean, it's it's quite amazing. Uh, Let's talk about uh, stop pins. Uh, so this, this knife uses kind of Strider-esque. It uses the thumb studs as the lockup, as opposed to the 200, which uses a stop pin right there that is shouldered. Um, one of the benefits uh, to this, assuming that this is a steel liner on this side, is you're going to get a very solid, or I'm sorry, on this side, you're going to get a very solid lockup. You've got both of these studs, one hitting a thick bar of titanium, one hitting a, a thinner piece of steel. Um, like I mentioned in my uh, review of this knife, one of the things that causes the lockup to move, aside from wear of the surfaces, is the blade settling in and moving back from hitting whatever's stopping the blade. Um, so the more you can do to shoulder that and the more contact you can get right here, contacting uh, what's on the blade, the uh, less chance of, of it wearing in and moving back will be. So I think they've covered that quite nicely on this knife. Um, it's fairly heavy. I mean, it's a beefy stout knife, but it, it's not too thick and it actually carries quite well. Um, I'm very impressed with, with how this knife carries. Uh, very, very nice. So a lot of people ask me, you know, what knife I'd recommend in what price range. This would definitely be one of my most recommended knives in the 200 to 250 dollar price range. Um, I, I really think that you cannot go wrong with uh, picking one of these up. There's a couple different versions that are available. Like I mentioned, you can get a green scale, tan scale, blacked out blade, or tiger striped blade on all of those. So definitely a lot to choose from. Um, and uh, just an excellent, excellent knife. All right, guys, that's it. Sorry for the uh, long video, but you know me, I'm, I'm just passionate about knives. All right, guys, talk to you later.